Hi everybody, today we're going to introduce a lady by the name of Nancy Falvey and Nancy was instrumental in actually bringing crochet to the lantern without her talent, gifts and skills that she has passed on. So Nancy is going to talk to us about the value and importance of crochet, how she came to crochet, her connection to Nano Nagel also and the skills that she has passed on to many communities and continues to do so today and the importance of sharing skills as well with each other. Hi everybody, my name is Nancy as Sylvia said and I didn't come from a family who were always knitting and crocheting like a lot of my friends but I always wanted to and my sister-in-law was living in Ballyfehan, I was living in the north side up in Dillon's Cross and she said she asked me a company or two a crochet class in the school in Balfihan and Sister Rose was giving night classes. Now we're talking about 1967. So Sister Rose was having adult education classes in presentation Balfihan then. After three weeks of Sister, I was able to crochet. I was really happy to be able to do it. So I was having my baby and I made little baby cardigans and little blankets and went on doing that for a long number of years and loved crochet with a passion. We moved out over to Paula Duff Road and my kids then went up to presentation Balfi had to school and I was at the time I wasn't involved in the school that much but I was aware that my friends in the north side were in lots of little groups. I had gotten involved with ICA in Balfihan and went to a Federation Day, as they call it, an exhibition of the work and people doing their tests in craft. And it was up in the country club, up in Montanati, and it was just like arriving in paradise when we saw the one. My sister Bridie and Charlotte Meany were together and we had all been crocheting, but we didn't know that you could actually do a proficiency test. So we saw people being tested for their work and we said, well, we'll do that next year. So we perfected our crochet and learned how to do it the right way with the ICA. We had to turn what we, what we learned we had to learn it again and do it again and we were successful in becoming proficient in crochet which meant we could teach in our community. An awful lot of people at the time used to be making iron sweaters for Blarney and they'd be going out to America and I thought like this is skill they don't you know people didn't realize actually the skills they had so we were looking funding to bring in a teacher to teach craft and I said to our coordinator at the time, Julie Murphy, Julie, myself and Bridie and Charlotte now are qualified to do it. So I asked them, we got the band room from the band to start a little class there. And we had three teachers and four pupils the first morning. They ended up making dresses and doing everything with the basic stitches. So it became bigger, the classes got bigger. And then we went on and we did different courses through the Community Development Project. We were invited to partake with Cork City of Culture in a project that was happening in St. Finbar's Hospital. And it was a textile project called the Memory Dress. And we met these two, we met two artists. Mary Brett and Charlotte O'Donovan was, were their names. They were after stitching dresses, making dresses out of paper, there were knitted dresses, they were all different shapes. I had never seen that there was something like the meaning of, there was something with meaning that you could tell a story and talk about your life 
through crochet, through knitting, through crap, through any form of textile. So we became part of that and they, the artists invited us to be part of one of their projects in the community. And it just happened that the ICA were meeting on a Thursday night and the artists came up to the community centre and it was the memory dress. They came with a little a cut out of a dress and you took your material, you took your pieces and you made a dress. If you wanted a crochet dress, you crocheted the top and put an end on it. But it was, what did the dress mean to you? But it was my first experience of arts and health and the meaning that came out from it. If it was today, we would have had a counsellor in the room, but we didn't, weren't aware. And thankfully, nothing really serious came up. But when Marie showed me some of the finished products, like one lady had had made a small dress and she had written Olive, the first of the sixth to the sixth of the sixth. So she'd made a dress in memory of her little girl who had passed and could help people to talk about something because the stories just flowed around the room that night. But it was just then meeting up with the artist was for me something I was always probably interested in it but never coming from my own background I couldn't see myself going to art college but it was something that I really resonated with and the community development project then had links with the arts office they had all different links so we would be invited to different seminars there was there were people from all different parts of the city and one lady that I was I was we were paired off together Arts officer in City Cork University Hospital and we sat and she said like what do you do and I said I crochet and she said I'm the artist in CUH the arts administrator and we'd love to do something with the maternity hospital and I said yeah it would be good. Then Karina rang me and asked me would I make hearts that they were having a fundraiser for the name of that organisation. Cry. Cry. Another artist, Neve Buckley, she's volunteered to frame them. So Neve got the words of mu of the music and did the background and raised them out. So Neve, without even re realising it, Neve set us off on a new way of framing from then on. There was something behind it. And then from the hearts for Le Gros Le Cira, we could have used the hearts for the remembrance service for the Seed Cork University Maternity Hospital to have every year they have a mass, our babies who died at birth, and they would all get a heart on the way out. We'd make three or 400. And then another hospital in Dublin, the Coombe in Dublin, we send them there all the time. It's part of their services for babies of loss. We were looking at, was there something we could do for COVID? And I would be able to sew, and I was thinking maybe I'd do masks. And Sylvia said to me, no, I'm going to do, these are a lot. You see, this is what's so important now to see where crochet, we're using crochet today. Sylvia said, no, there are people in nursing homes that will see nobody as long as this goes on. So I'm thinking, I'm going to make hearts and pass them in to nursing homes. And I thought, whoa, this is a great, this would be a lovely thing to do. So I decided, was it the masks or the hearts? But the heart won out. So Sylvia started it. We rang. Mary Mott Hospice, first of all, and the lady outside said, oh, that's such a lovely idea to think that somebody out there is thinking of us here. It means an awful lot. So she said, the only thing, Nancy, would you get Sylvia to write a few words? And really, 
the words say it all. She just said it from the heart and it's still getting people. Now we've been doing, we must have a thousand gone out, if not more, to every part of the city. They've gone out to Canada. They're now going to Beijing. They're going all over in little to little pockets and they're being so well received and even in our own convent I said to Sister Jenny um, I'd send you up a few hearts and she said she would just send us up one for one we'll do Nancy we'll have one up and I said no we'll get you one each so we sent up the hearts to Jenny and she said when they sat down to dinner and they all got their the sisters above got their hearts and I said to her make sure Sister Margaret Mary Sister Margaret Mary is above and Sister Margaret Mary was in Norpres when I was in Norpres and I loved Norpres they were, I, I really did I still remember some of the nuns and that's where I learned about Nan O'Negan she was always at the back of my mind I had never been even over to Douglas Street but she was there always I always thought of her and I always thought of her not so much as a nun, but as a woman walking around Cork City. And I, I kind of started list, looking into her, but it was because of the nuns. It was a Sister Claire. She was a beautiful nun. Sister de Pazzi is still alive. But I sat in the number three bus one day and I looked at this lady next to me and I said, are you Sister Margaret Mary? And she said, I am. I said, well, you were in our place. I was in our prison when you were. But I said, I wasn't in your class, you just had the good girls. They were left on to do their leaving. Because we kind of didn't have much really. To be honest, nobody had ever in my house done even as far as the intercert. And actually, Sister Delord, she was very unhappy that I was leaving. If I'm to be now when I think of it, she said, you really could stand and do your leaving, but my mother or father wouldn't hear of it. They just said, look, you're 14, 15, you'll get a job. So I got a job in a, in a hat factory near me. But when I was talking to Jenny um, about the hearts and sending up the hearts and making sure Sister Margaret Mary got a heart, she said to me, and so you were there? I said, yeah, I was up in, in our press, but I, I never got into Sister Margaret Mary's class. She had the good girls. And Sister Jenny said, well, Nancy, if the good girls did a half as good as you, they'd be after doing a grand job in the North press. No. There was always something about the presentation to me. And then I became interested in... Nan O'Negan, when we were doing another art project, Josephine Brennan was the home school liaison officer and they were, hadn't been working in community and they asked would we meet as community people, herself and Helen Kelly um, were going into this in a whole, a whole new venture and we told them what we were doing in community and we became more friendly. Josephine had taught my daughter for two years so I knew I had a relationship with her and she asked would we come into the school and teach crochet and knitting to the children and we started going in and we're still doing it today for 20 years going into presentation Valfi Han and for the last 20 years every ch every year at communion, we would make some little thing for them. But I was in an ICA about 10 years ago, more now, no, 15 maybe. And there was a lady asked me, would I have a pattern for a cross? And I said, a cross for what? For, no, she said, I got a pattern from America for a rosary bead. And so, we then decided that we would make a little purse to go with them. So from that year on, every child in presentation, Man If You Had, 
would have a little ceremony with the priest and he'd come over and bless their rosary beads and hand them out. And to this day, even now we're waiting for this year's communions to be announced and we'll be making bags, handbags now, and they've gotten more, more elaborate <laughs> as the years went on. But again, I could meet, I have worked, we also have worked in secondary, in presentation, secondary school. And I, when we would work and do some arts projects with children, the girls above, they would tell me that here they are now in Leaving Cert, but they still have their rosary bead they got. I went into the library and went into the archives and Sister Pius had written a book and I arranged to go into meet her inside in Douglas Street and she spoke to me about Nano, took me into her room and then I went into the library and researched and in one of the pieces that I found was a piece that really spoke to me and it said in at the great exhibition in Fitzgerald's Park there was ex, there was an exhibition of work by some made by little children knitting and crochet. So they were being taught at that time to children in and around Douglas Street. But by that time, Nano had schools all over. I learned through that research was Nano was a nun a few years before she died. She was a holy woman and always wanted the children. It was about teaching their catechism and it was to do with the Lord and she knew she wanted the, the, ch the children to have a chance in life and that the only way was education. And in my life, she would have always been someone I would think of and I could see her vision of education and giving people a chance which know it, what it did for a lot of the ladies like Sylvia, Veronica, they came in, started crochet, perfected their work, went off and they are now inside doing an amazing job. Sylvia did it, now Veronica is, but they're aware of people who they become, anyone that comes in contact with them is secure because they're aware of coming together in this way is it, it's, it helps with loneliness it can help with you advancing the opportunities that are there in in the lantern today are really it's it's back it's what nano would have wanted in today's world that here's I mean, how many years ago is that? 1857, 2020. But today, the lantern is people is feeding people's hearts. It's keeping their hearts going. It's keeping them alive. It's linking them with society that they had withdrawn from. There is no one as happy as I am today to see the hearts gone back in to the lantern and into Nano Nagel Place. The Lantern Project acknowledges the contribution of incredible women like Nancy who have shared their skills and who encourage people to learn in a safe and secure environment. We are thankful to Sylvia for starting our little crochet group and for Veronica for holding such a beautiful space where people feel welcomed and share the gift of crochet and knitting in Nanonagel.